Now, folks, with the help of my friend Google, we're going to go through and we're going to confirm everything I just said. So, first off, give me a yeah. Okay. There are many different transliterations in other languages. Mother, major uh, water spirit of the Yoruba religion. So, the Yoruba religion. Something you should check out. I can't speak very much about any of this because I, I I don't I don't know this myself personally. So I'm not gonna go out and let them speak here. But uh, nonetheless, Yamoja, Yamaya. There's many different literations, okay, but she is the major water spirit from the Yoruba religion. So if you wanted to check that person out, the deity I showed you there, I'll put her back on her little spot here. Okay. So then you could you could check that out. Next one is Babos. <coughs> so there's the obelisk in Rome, uh, obelisk in center of Plaza del. You'll have to answer that. Uh, known as the, I think it's Thelemin Obelisk was brought to Rome by Augustine to mark the anniversary of the conquest of Egypt. In Rome, it was erected at the eastern end of the subpoena at the Circus Maximus. <coughs> so we're talking about conquest to Egypt. You can see that right there. Okay. <coughs> when Did Rome invade? And see, it's one of the it's one of the things that pops up right there too. This isn't in my looking. This is this is one of the things, one of the searches that pops up. When did Rome invade Egypt? So thirty BC. Right, so in theory, there is the uh, oh, I know they don't mean it, but there's supposed to be like the before Christ and after death, right? You have AD, BC, uh, so right there at 30, hmm. uh, Christ lived to be 33. Oh, that's interesting. I, I didn't, I'm learning these things as I show them to you, so I, I, I didn't, I'm just putting this together just out loud. Um, Rome's rule over Egypt officially began with the arrival of Octavian, later called Augustus, in 30 BC, following his defeat of Mark, Antony, and Cleopatra in the Battle of Actum. Okay. <laughs> so, then we have... Um, then we have... Sorry, Tablet. Um, where did where did Jewish religion come from? The religion is rooted in the ancient Near Eastern religion of Canaan, which today constitutes Israel Palestine territories. Judaism emerged from the beliefs and practices of the people known as Israel. What is considered classical or rabbinical Judaism did not emerge until the first century CE. So we're so we're we're after that there at 30 BC. Alright, so it says that Judaism emerged from the beliefs and practices of Israel. So where did religion come from. Okay, where did the where did the original Israelites come from? Number one, so we'll just start with that. 
Based on archaeological evidence, according to the modern archaeological account, the Israelites and their culture did not overtake the region by force, but instead branched out of the indigenous Canaanite peoples that long inhabited the southern Syria, ancient Israel, region. Okay, where did the original Israelites... So where did the originalists of the Israelites go? Okay. Where did the original... So I, I typed this in because we're focused on the religion aspect. So it says the Israelites came out of Canaan. Okay. Uh, but where did the original uh, uh, religion of the Israelites come from? The origins of Judaism lie in the Bronze Age in this polyistic, ancient, Semitic religions specifically evolving out of polytheistic ancient Canaanite religion the coexisting with Babylonian religion and element and syncretizing elements of Babylonian belief into the worship of Yahweh as reflected in the earlier prophetic so we're going to say, where did the original religion, the origins of Judaism date back over 3,500 years. The religion is rooted in the ancient Near Eastern religion of Cana, which today constitutes Israel, Palestine, territories. Okay, so. Okay. Like other people... So what were the religious practices of ancient Canaan? Uh, like other people of the ancient Near East, Canaanite religious beliefs were polytheistic. Angels, right? Natura. Okay. With, familiar, with, with families typically focusing on veneration of the dead in the form of household gods and goddesses. The Elohim while acknowledging the existence of other deities such as Baal and El Ma Quos Esra and Astarte. Okay, so we're going to look at Elohim because I know Elohim also means angels. And remember, like I said about the Afro, it's not Halo, it's Afro. So let's let's do that. What are the religious? practices of see it says what are practices of the Elohim in Bible but we look at Elohim so the Elohim within Raylan religion according to the Raylan movement the Elohim are a human like alien race that created life through scientific purposes on earth so the interesting thing and, and, and I have known partially about uh, that um, the interesting thing would be that uh, if you look up um, the ancient Sumerians and you look up uh, in, in our probably will here later on the channel uh, their gods and what, what they had to say and such as that it was as if they had came from another planet to come here and so uh, just so we're clear that would be the uh, that would be the commissions is what I'm calling the, the black people that's that's what uh, that's that's what that would be. That would be the Commissions. Okay, the Commissions would have uh, thereby been the Elohim, if you're following me so far. Uh, but uh, the Raylan really, really beliefs and practices, Elohim, Mormonism, the Mormon Church beliefs. Okay, so. And I saw the one that said the seven Elohim, which I would imagine has to do with the seven archangels, but I don't know. 
It's generally thought that Elohim is derived from Eloah, the later being an expanded form of the Northwest Semitic noun Il. Uh, the related nouns of Eloah are used as proper names or as generics, in which case interchangeable with Elohim. Well, that's right. So, so Elohim means multiple. So it can't it can't be the Elohim be be God. But um, Elohim is thus a plural construct. Powers Hebrew grammar allows for this noun to mean he is the power singular over powers plural, just as the word means owner. Is Lord. So I went about this the wrong way, my bad. Where because it said Hebrew there if you if you were able to see that. It says uh so we have Jews and we have Hebrew. Jews and Hebrew. Okay. So we're going to say where did the origins of Judaism hmm. So we're saying that So Cana and Israel and all that, that would have been the, the spot that they went out into after after they escaped Egypt on, on and eventually ran into the Romans. Uh the people on is Israel. So we say the ancient Hebrew come from what is the Hebrew faith called? Okay, so the Hebrew faith itself is called uh, Judaism. Okay, uh, the first of the oldest of three great monotheistic faiths is the religion and way of life of the Jewish people. The basic laws and tenets of Judaism derived from the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. Okay, so where did the Hebrew people come from? Where did the Hebrew, where did the Hebrew people come in? According to the Old Testament, the Hebrews wandered the desert in Sinai Peninsula, which is between Egypt and Cana for 40 years. Okay, so Egypt and Cana are literally so close to each other that there's just a desert between them. Um, well, here we go, let's do this. Mm -hmm. The Egyptians reject God, but the Hebrews embrace him, Exodus tells us. And when the Israelites saw the almighty hand of Yahweh displayed, the Egyptians displayed the Hebrews. Why did the why did Egypt enslave Hebrews? The Israelites have between the Israelites had been in Egypt for generations, but now that they had become so numerous, the Pharaoh feared the presence, or feared their presence. He feared that one day the Israelites would turn against the Egyptians. Gradually and stealthily, he forced them to become his slaves. That, that, I don't know. It doesn't sound like there's a whole lot to that, but okay. Uh, who brought the Jews to Egypt in the Bible? As early as the 3rd century BCE, before Common Era, uh, there was a widespread dysphoria of... Yeah, or widespread diasporia of Jews in many Egyptian towns and cities in Josephus' history, 
it is claimed that after the first I can't, I can't say that Jude, Judea he led some 12,000 Jewish captives to Egypt from the areas of Judea, Jerusalem okay so Hebrew people labored Hebrew people labored in droves to build the spectacular pyramids because the slaves were an invaluable workforce. It was the state's best interest to keep them alive, but they were made very much aware who wielded the power. Hmm. Why is Moses not mentioning Egyptian history? What happened to Egypt? What happened? What did you do with what happened to Egypt after the Hebrews left? The Bible tells us that when the Israelites left Egypt, they plundered the Egyptians. That is, they took most of the wealth of land, silver, gold, clothing with them. In modern times, it seems roughly equivalent to the sudden loss of everyone's lifetime savings. So, rather the, even though, even though there was the talk on here about the Romans uh, conquering and the conquest of, of Egypt, okay, it says right here that the Bible tells us that when the Israelites left Egypt, they plundered the Egyptians. So, so the so the Israelites supposedly migrating with with all this um, plundered the Egyptians. That is, they took most of the wealth of the land, silver, gold, and clothing with them. In modern times, this terms roughly equivalent to the sudden loss of everyone's lifetime savings. So they. they so they supposedly they already took it but, the, but there was the roman takeover of the uh roman takeover and occupation of egypt so there had to be, anyways anyways okay so but we get in there we get in there so if uh if the egyptians or the israelites so sam when the Bible tells us when the Israelites left Egypt. So we should look it up as when did the Israelites encounter the Romans? Encounter. When did the Romans encounter the Romans? The Roman army arrived on the shores of the Holy Land in 63 BCE about 135 years later after the temple in Jerusalem lay in ruins in the third and most enduring explosion of the Jews from their, or expulsion of the Jews from their homeland was underway. when the Israelites were conquered. Okay, but what happened? That's the very next thing right there. What happened when the Israelites conquered the Romans? Uh, Roman general Pompey uh, conquered Jerusalem and its surroundings in 63 BCE, the Romans disposed the ruling dynasty of Judea. Okay. Now, did the and Roman Jewish communities thrive? Jews became significant part of the population. 
Egypt was a subdivision of the Roman Empire from Rome's invasion of the against the Jewish uprising. Was Egypt colonized by Rome? So we have. What happened between the Romans and the Jews? The Jewish Roman tensions resulted in several Jewish Roman wars between the years 66 and 135 CE, which resulted in the destruction of Jerusalem and the Second Temple and the institution of Jewish tax in 70. Those who paid the tax were exempt from the obligations of making sacrifices to the Roman imperial cult. So then, essentially, what this is saying here is that uh, I, I, I misspoke on the fact that uh, the Jews led the Romans to Egypt, which technically they did. Okay, because when the Jews left the land with all the stuff from Egypt, right, they sat in their homeland for a period of time, right, before they were conquered by the Romans. And it says right here that the uh, Jewish Roman tensions resulted in several Jewish Roman wars between the years of 66 and 135 CE, which resulted in the destruction of Jerusalem, uh, of Jerusalem and the Second Temple. And the institution of the Jewish tax, okay, it says right here that those who paid the Jewish tax were exempt from the obligation of making sacrifices to the Roman imperial cult, okay. So the very next thing to search up would be, we we'll just type in the words Roman imperial cult. And, uh... Egypt. Let me see what pops up. The Roman imperial cult identified emperors and some members of their families with the divinity sanctioned authority of the Roman state. Its framework was based on Roman and Greek presidents and was formulated during the early Throughout the Roman Empire, the living emperor was the subject of worship and also in part the object of a cult. Okay. Between Egyptian religion and Christianity, not similarities. <coughs> So we have right here, um, make an assumption here, uh, the paper, or uh, Pharaoh Blasius, the emperor, the Roman imperial cult in Egypt, right? It says this paper approaches the less historical context uh, of social and cultural interactions between Greeks and Egyptians from the... Macadamian, Macadamian, there we go, Macadamian conquest. I'm sure that's not what that says, but uh, to the Roman rule over probably Egypt. Okay, but um, the Roman imperial cult in Egypt, it was Roman, but its regional variation allowed for different forms. In this way, we pay less attention to the center, the Egyptian form of the imperial cult. So, there's that was the, okay, what are the similarities? 
Were the Roman emperors pharaohs? That'd be probably the next one. But the purpose of the imperial cult? What was an important influence of Egyptian civilization? What was an important influence of Egypt? Okay. On the so, what are the similarities between ancient Egypt and ancient Rome? Both ancient Egypt and ancient Rome used their feet and walking sticks that elderly people use when they are old and can't see far. Okay. They both use chariots and litters and also boats. They also both have funeral boats used to carry the dead person to a funeral and then back to a gravestone. Okay, well that's very interesting. Uh, what was the important influence of Egyptian civilization on the Roman Empire? We have Roman Empire, Roman emperors and citizens were also influenced by Egyptian religious ideology. So not only the, the Jewish peoples who were, so the Hebrew people who became the Israelites, right? Not only were they influenced by the Jew, by the Egyptians because they were, uh, they were uh, enslaved by the uh, by the Egyptians, uh, but uh, but also the Romans themselves were uh, Roman Roman emperors and citizens were also influenced by Egyptian religious ideologies. The adoption of certain ast astrological practices by Augustus and others was one example that quickly became a part of Roman society and culture. Okay. Um, they have, as I already put up, as I already mentioned, see the obelisk of ancient Rome, okay, which was the conquest of Egypt. So they would have found out about Egypt from the Jewish peoples and then conquested there. Okay. Uh, what was the purpose of the imperial cult? Were the, were the uh, emperors considered pharaohs? Though the Egyptians themselves considered the Romans to be their pharaohs, and the legitimate successors of the ancient pharaohs, the emperors themselves never adopted any pharaonic titles or traditions outside of Egypt, as they would have been hard to justify in Roman world wars. So they're saying, um, I get you. They're saying, uh, what you call it? <coughs> they are saying that uh, while the Romans were busy ruling Egypt, that they were, uh, they were, um, what you call it? They were uh, considered pharaohs of the people they ruled because the people they ruled were the, the Egyptians at the time. So. The next thing, I'll be back with the other section as far as uh, Enoch, and then as far as, uh, what you call it, as far as Martin Luther King. Yep. Yeah. All right. <laughs> the Martin Luther King Jr. So I'm saying this man right here, this was y'all's second Messiah. Y'all already killed him. Let's see real fast. Martin Luther King was a American Baptist minister and activist, one of the most prominent leaders in the civil rights movement in 1955 until his assassination, assassination in 1968. Uh, what was Martin Luther King known for? Martin Luther King Jr. is a civil rights legend in the mid-50s. Martin Luther King led the movement to end segregation and counter prejudice in the United States through the means of peaceful protest. His speeches, some of the most iconic 20th century, 
had a profound effect on the national conscious in January. So that's when that was supposed to. Okay, what are five interesting facts about Dr. King? Alright, uh, Dr. King's uh, birth name was Michael, not Martin. Uh, King entered college at age, uh, age of 15, I think. Uh, King received his doctorate in systematic theology. Uh, King's I Have a Dream speech was not his first at the Lincoln Memorial. King was uh, imprisoned nearly 30 times. Okay. There was a brisk day in the nation's capital, and King, then in his late 30s, was preparing to speak during the Million Man March on October 16, 1995. That, what? There was a brisk day in the nation's capital, and King, then in his late 30s, was preparing to speak during the Million Man March on October 16, 1995. That probably was one of the largest demonstrations of black men that had ever been done in terms of the United States being told CNN. Hold on now. So he was not alive in the Million Man March, 1965. So... From organizing the march on Washington for jobs and freedom to his peaceful protest uh, in Montgomery, okay, march on Washington. I always thought that brown and black people were included in the pride flag. Let's see. So. Okay. So. The first uh, rainbow flag was created in the 1970s. The Million Man March wasn't until 1995. And Martin Luther King was assassinated in 1968. So. Martin Luther King would have flown the divi the the, uh, the rainbow flag, the diversity flag, um, in the uh, in the Million Man March. Huh. Well, there's that. Now, the other thing we have to look up is Kemet. Where is Kemet in Africa? Who is God in Kemet? What race is Kemet? Why Egypt? Uh, why was Egypt called Kemet? So, the Egyptians called the country Kemet, literally the black land. Kem or yeah, Kem meant black. The in ancient uh, Egyptian, the name derived from the color of the rich and fertile black soil which was due to the annually occurring Nile in, in duration. So Kemet was the cultivated area along the Nile Valley. Okay. Uh, what race was Kemet? Um, ancient Egyptians referred to their homeland as Kemet conventionally pronounced as Kemet. According to the, something I can't pronounce, the Egyptians referred to themselves as black people or Kemet and Kem. 
what is the etymological root of other words such as can, ham, and refer to black people in Hebrew tradition. So there's that. Okay. Who, what, who is God in Kemet? In ancient Egypt or Kemet, as it is also known to its people at the time, one key concept was the relationship between three deities, Asar, Aset, and Haru, as I told you earlier. Um, most Americans today know them better by their, by the, by the names the Greeks gave them. Osiris, Isis, Horus, respectively. Where is Kemet in Africa? Kemet was one of the, one of the names given to Egypt by its ancient indigenous inhabitants. Uh, in a modern context, the term Kemet has become associated by placing Egypt in its African cultural context. Uh, there are many links between ancient Egypt and modern African cultures, such as headrests and hairstyles like the side lock. Okay, what country is Kemet now? A number of names were used for Egypt, so it's still Egypt. Okay, why is Kemet an importance of black history? There you go. Uh, to social sciences, Kemet contributed to the first order of policing a social of policing a social order. Farmers benefit from their inventions and ox drum plow, the sickle irrigation and grain grinding mills. Ladies, we should thank Kemet people for their invention of wigs and cosmetic makeup. Egyptians have our Egyptians Arabs. What was Kemet called before language? Was the creator in Kemet what language? What race? Who controls Kemet today? What was Egypt called in the Bible? What are the 42 Egyptians then? That's interesting. What did the people of Kemet look like? What was Kemet famous for? The Kemetic people, uh, the Kemetic people, the Kemetic people designed and built pyramids and made important contributions in many fields, including uh, mathematics, agricultural, uh, yeah, architecture, chemistry, medicine, and more. They expressed their ideas in sacred symbols, such as those found in the pyramids and in the tombs, like that belonging to Tutankhamun. Okay. When did Kemet turn into Egypt? So then from 525 BCE, non-African rulers controlled Kemet, which became known as Egypt under I can't read that word or the automatic rulers then in 642 CE Egypt became so wait a minute so Egypt was never called Egypt until it was taken under Roman rule So Rome's rule over Egypt officially began with the arrival of the Octavian era. Oh, I got 
Augustus in 30 BC, including the defeat of Mark Antony and Cleopatra in 30 BC. It says, um, Five twenty five BC. Prince Egypt. Okay. Five twenty five BC. Very good. History of the Jews in Egypt in the nineteen fifties, Egypt began to expel the Jewish population in 1940. There we go. When were the Jews enslaved in Egypt? 3rd century BCE. So, as early as the 3rd century BCE, there was a widespread dysphoria. 3rd century BCE. Okay, so now we get to uh, the homie named Moses, all right? So first and foremost, let's mention the fact that we got ourselves a question right here. Why isn't Moses mentioned at all in ancient Egyptian pharaohs, inscriptions, and plays, okay? Now, this is interesting because Moses was not considered a pharaoh, right? Now, we know that he, you know, the story about him floating in a basket being a king of pharaoh, so on, whatever. Or being, uh, being brother of pharaoh, excuse me. Moses, what are the teachings of Moses? It says that the teachings of Moses... What was Moses' most important? What, what, what was Moses' most important teachings? You come down here on behalf of Israel. Moses uh, received the Torah, traditionally translated law. That is, that up here. That is not law in the modern sense, but rather authoritative teaching, instruction, or guidance. The most famous of these teaching uh, of these commandments are the ten. So, you have the, so, in other words, when it says Moses broke five clay tablets, he broke five clay tablets of the Torah, essentially, if, 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 I'm, if I'm understanding that. Okay, what four lessons can we learn from the life of Moses? Okay, but, if we go forward and we ask, where did Moses get the Torah? <laughs> we see rabbinic writings state that the oral teach the oral Torah was given to Moses on Mount Sinai, uh, which, according to the tradition of Orthodox Judaism, occurred in 1312. <laughs> Where did the Torah come from? Uh, did Moses receive the Torah or the Ten Commandments? How did Moses write the Torah? Where was the first Torah found? Okay, so where did the Torah come from? <coughs> On the basis of a variety of arguments, <coughs> modern scholars generally see the completed Torah as a product of the time of the Persian Academical Empire. <coughs> or Achaemenid, whatever. Uh, although some would place its composition in the Hellenistic period. Okay. Uh, did Moses receive Torah or the Ten Commandments? 
The Torah is considered by Jews to be the holiest part of the something I can't pronounce was given by God to Moses on Mount Sinai. <coughs> <coughs> Romans the first part. How did Moses write the Torah? Let's let's look at that one more fast. Then I have a different question. The rabbi, the, the rabbis, were aware that some phrases in the Torah did not seem to fit with divine dictation of a pre-existent text. And this advert, oh, this awareness accounts for a second tradition of how the divine word was transmitted. God spoke and Moses remembered the divine words and wrote them down afterwards together with some explanatory. So, Mount Sinai, S-I-N-A-I, What importance did Mount Sinai Sinai have to the comedic religion? Mount Sinai, Egypt. Mount Sinai is venerated by three faiths as the place where God revealed the Ten Commandments to Moses. Comedic Egyptian spirituality that illustrates tradition. Malak comes from ancient Comedic spirituality. You can open the word. Human spirit tradition. Hmm. Mount Sinai in the wilderness where after crossing the Red Sea God met with Moses to live with. Okay. What importance did Mount Sinai have? So nothing involving Kanishan at all or Kemet to the Egyptians. The chapel encloses the rock which is considered by it is considered to be the source of biblical tablets and so Jewish, Christian, and Muslim traditions all have deep ties to the landscape and monuments of the region. Hmm. What importance did Mount Sinai have? To the Egyptian faith. Yeah, what is important? So Mount Sinai. What importance to Mount Sinai to the Egyptian pharaoh? Alright, so now I'm going to hit y'all with my business plan, right? So, I mean every bit of what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm uh, technologically illiterate, uh, so I don't know if there possesses a way for a account. And, of course, I'd be explain expressing that to my bank and to PayPal. That's the only people I'll take any information from, but... I don't know if there possesses a way for an account to be viewable to the populace without being touchable. I, I, I don't know, so I had to figure that out. But uh, if this is what I'm promising, this is what I'm planning, this is where the goal is, okay? So I have lots of things I want to do. Uh, we're going to name off two of them in this business plan, and uh, we're going to start ourselves a model. For how we can change the world uh, 
uh, just with me being on this simple YouTube channel and you hitting the donate button. All I'm asking for is a dollar. Here, here, what, here, what your dollar gonna do real fast before you judge me. So, <laughs> when you give me a dollar, okay, so you gonna hit that big red donate button. Here's what's gonna happen. Now, uh, I'm opening up a business account with PayPal so that I can accept uh, all forms of payment. That way I don't have to just have a PayPal to PayPal. You can, and I assume according to the way that I understand it, you can pay with anything you want to, Visa, MasterCard, your bank account, your debit, your whatever, okay? I chose to use PayPal. I understand there's something about some sort of percentages, whatever, I don't care. I want you to know that you are safe in opening up your wallet to me. And I want to make sure that's done through uh, the most reputable that I know of, which is PayPal. Okay, I could be wrong, but it, it appears to be when you say online banking or internet, I think the word PayPal. So, so there you go. So that red donate button is going to put uh, whatever you donate to me. All I'm asking you for is a dollar, but I'll, I'll make it so you can put more if you really want to. But I uh, just... Thank you. Um, but what's gonna happen is is that when you when you give me one dollar, okay, once you know what I'm gonna do with it. <laughs> so it's gonna go to this PayPal account. Now, uh I'm sorry, okay, I understand I might be a little paranoid, that's fine, okay. I don't like the idea of my money just sitting on paypal okay so what will happen from there is once you once you give me that dollar that dollar goes from paypal to the checking account which is always going to be empty because the second i put money in the checking account i'm going to sort it this way and i'm letting you know how i'm going to sort it okay so we have checking savings and over here we have personal I wanna, I don't wanna lie to you guys I'm being straight up with you guys this is how this is how I plan on doing it okay so number one when you don't need me a dollar it's gonna go to a PayPal account Okay, that dollar, what'll happen is, is that right off the top, okay, while it's still in the PayPal account, I'm going to use 33% of that dollar right off the top to advertise my videos, my content, my everything. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna use that 33% right off the top for that. That way I can get these videos pushed in other places other than just YouTube. That way I can, that way I can move things forward here because I have a goal here. So but 33% of that dollar is gonna come right off the top, okay? Then with the leftover amount, so the remaining 66%, okay, is it going to come down here? Now, I'm not even going to write a figure because this is how my banking is going to go so you guys know. When it goes into my checking account, okay, I'm going to put 66% of what's remaining that comes from my PayPal over here for taxes. Okay. I'm gonna pay 66% of my taxes quarterly, okay? Even if it overpays, I think you can gain interest that way. And if that's the case, that works too because it'll keep this ball rolling faster, okay? Uh, but I'm gonna pay 66% to my taxes. It's gonna sit in a savings account until I pay quarterly every year, okay? 33% uh, of that is gonna go right over here, right? So, or, well, I guess it'd be well, no, I'll, I'll leave 1% in the checking account. So 33% of that is going to go of what, of what comes from PayPal, right? So 66% is going to go to my to my savings for taxes. 
33% is going to go to my checking for my own personal living, okay? Now, I want to tell you what I'm planning on doing with my own personal living portion of this. That way all this will make a little sense to you. And maybe it make a little more sense to you as to why you want to give me that dollar on that PayPal. That if you choose to and if you're in the, in the place to be able to, okay? And that's this right here. Okay. <laughs> so that 33% that I set in my check and of course, uh, you know, I have to pay my bills and such as that, but if I get enough money in there, if, if you can help support me, if you can help me make this my nine to five, okay, if you can, I'll, I'll dedicate myself to you. you there might be a day lapse, here, day or two laps here, here coming soon because, uh, I've just hammered at this. I, I built this thing and then uh, I've been hammering and teaching myself all these things. I still haven't even figured out how to put these videos to YouTube, but I know that I'm getting the film uh, taken care of. And uh, then as soon as that's done, then I just got to set up the PayPal account, which I'm talking to you about now, and uh, set up a, uh, uh, what you call it, figure out how I can even post these videos on YouTube because I, I don't know that yet. But <laughs> when you give me that dollar and I put 66, I put 33% to advertising initially and 66% of that comes to, uh, comes from my PayPal account to my checking account, right? And 66% uh, of what comes to my checking account is going to go to my savings and 33% is going to go to my, uh, my actual, what I live off of, right? I'll leave that 1% in there for emergencies or in case we want to splurge on the, uh, uh, on doing something for the channel or something like that. I, I, I don't know. Okay. But, uh, but what, what'll happen here is this right here is I'm going to take that 33% and I'm going to buy real estate. It's specifically, man, I, I don't know because it doesn't make any sense for me to ask for your money for me to just turn around and go throw it into a hole that's not going to be any good with that being said i i think i would like to buy up low-income housing because with the goal in it i i know i know i'm gonna say something here and you guys are gonna think it's stupid and you guys are gonna think it's too good to be true but i actually have a plan for it it could work if we work together it's up to you it's a button push requires you to give me a dollar it, it's up to you okay but but this is this, this is what i'm trying to work out with you real fast okay so i'm gonna start uh buying up real estate i'm gonna start a real estate business okay now if you give me your dollar like i say these things will go this way this will be 33 percent goes you know like i said i pay my bills first and all that stuff and when i can afford it i will i will invest in real estate and i'll put videos on here that way you guys can see that i'm doing the thing I, I i believe in holding myself accountable so you guys will be able to see this all the way from the me starting here in the shed to the whatever this ends up being okay well what i would like to do is i would like to buy low income house okay and there's a reason for that and it's not anything judgmental it's not it's not it's not okay so i want you to understand something and the don't uh i don't know that you will but i'm gonna try to give it to you okay <laughs> so when it comes to business you can file what are known as losses okay and i want you to understand that real fast so you hit the dollar Okay, 66 gets gets set back for taxes and then whenever everything gets returned, uh, that money will go right back into real estate for buying low income housing is what I'm hoping for. But again, like I say, I'm not gonna sink my money into a hole. I wanna make wise choices, okay? But I, cause I wanna make these places where people can live at, okay? <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. So I want, uh, I would like to buy low income housing and what I would like to do is this right here. Now it's my understanding that if you buy like a sixplex this low income housing, okay, then you're guaranteed you get the money 
uh, because it's low income housing and the state has something worked out. And I'm, I'm talking about giving you guys cushion on both ways on that. And this is, this is how, so <clears throat> you buy low income housing, right? And let's say low income housing promises you a thousand a month. Okay. Uh, whereas they charge the tenant, let's say six fifty. Okay. This is, we can, we can end homelessness like this. Okay. I, yeah, I, I, I don't know how to display it on the internet. If there's a way for me to figure that out between PayPal and my banks, I will. Okay. That way I can hold myself accountable. That way you can look and you can see what's going on. Okay. But if you hit that dollar button right now, okay, this is what I'm planning on doing with it. Now I got to get me straight okay I, I i literally this is it this is what i'm doing right now this is i'm devoting my heart and soul to this this is this is i need to see where this goes and i feel that god has called me to it and that's 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 where i'm at with it and uh, uh this is the last of the videos for me to produce as soon as i get it all edited i'm putting it out there but it works like this sorry if you guys can donate me enough money okay then what ends up happening is this right here is that that money would be handled as i explained and i will buy low-income housing okay if they pay me a thousand a month okay and and i and i i get i get it. so first i have to buy low-income housing second i have to have enough low-income housing to make an impact okay but, but we'll get to that and I'll figure out at the very least I'll just come up here to this whiteboard and I'll talk you through what we're at on things so I can hold myself accountable I I, I mean that I, I'll do that there's no there's no reason why I I can literally I'll treat you as if we are a relationship right and I will let you know as far when I say relationship I mean business partnership and uh and I'll let you know uh what it is that I'm doing with our channel as far as where, where we're going with things okay but the plan here is this right here is that uh, of course I gotta I gotta fix me but I buy this low-income housing I buy enough of it if they pay a thousand dollars for the person to pay 650 the reason why I got those two put up on the board is this right here if you guys donate me enough money then what we can do is this I want to make it okay this is a multi-impact statement I want you I want you to hear me real fast okay so these are these are low income housing okay I want to make it so that a person anybody who qualifies for low-income housing okay now everybody always says well somebody has to foot the bill and I want to foot the bill okay I, I'm sorry flat broke uh, I need you to help me okay but I want to be that source that foots that bill and I want I want to explain to you what I'm putting the bill of and what it is we can do with this if you help me okay so if you donate me enough money and I get enough low-income housing and I get enough of them okay then this is what can happen. I want to make it so that a person only pays rent once every quarter. Okay? So that's once every three months. Okay? A person would actually pay rent once every three months. Now, here's what I mean by that. So this, this is, uh, all things are double-edged, but this, this is a good thing, both sides. Okay? So number one. <laughs> When the state pays me a thousand dollars, when when the person's only given six fifty, the state is bumping me up three hundred and fifty dollars per person, okay, or per rental unit, okay. So if I make it so that a person only pays rent once every quarter, so once every three months, okay, then what ends up happening is is that two of those months the state don't pay me 350 so now your taxes are more effective that's 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 one thing but then the the other thing is this right here now you as the person renting okay 
that you still have an obligation of 650 okay so every month you as the you know, I, I know i just said that you ain't paying rent but once quarterly and now i'm saying you're paying rent every month but you are paying rent every month okay you will you will not lay back relax none of that no uh, you will have a job okay but we're going to get you somewhere with your job and we're going to make this thing possible that not that the only way to do this is there has to be money coming in to support this but i want you to hear what i have to say real fast okay so if a person is in charge of coming up with 650 every month for their rent because they qualify for low income housing okay and i'm telling you that i am only charging them once every quarter so i'm only taking that 650 once every three months then that allows for 1300 every quarter right now here's what i propose i propose that if you can help me generate enough revenue to create this so that this 1300 dollars that this person would be paying to low-income housing now goes back into their pocket okay now why would we do that and how would we do that let me explain so this thirteen hundred dollars before it goes back to their pocket because it's going to go into their pocket it is their money but first it's going to pay for two people okay i want every person who has to pay rent to have two people in their life you know what that is i want every person to have an accountant right and i want every person to have a therapist right now i know you're thinking to yourself well why on earth would i want an accountant or a therapist or why would i sign up for having an accountant or a therapist uh, i just go rent somewhere else and that's fine uh, you can still rent from me. You don't have to be part of my little game here. However, at the same time, what that equals out to is, is that if you choose not to be part of my little game, uh, I'll take my 650 from you every month. Thank you kindly. Okay. But if you want to, to play along here, then this is how this works. That $1,300 will be able to pay for you an accountant and a therapist. Okay. So there are two people in the world that are guaranteed to give a damn about you because somebody's paying them money to do so okay now thirteen hundred dollars don't sound like a lot but over a period of time it will be okay but number two if you have an accountant managing your money they can make sure that they pay themselves and the therapist okay number three if you're in a person if you're a person with a substance abuse addiction problem or, or some sort of a drinking problem or something like that you know you have a tendency for benders or whatever uh, you're not going to be able to get a hold of that money from your accountant without your therapist's okay okay so now you have an actual real responsible thirteen hundred dollars every quarter of the year okay that handled properly by an accountant and therapist will be used responsibly in your life so if you have child support to pay back, if you have overdue taxes, if you have bills to pay, these two individuals are going to make sure that you pay them. So that way we have forward movement in your financial future. Do you understand? Okay. And so eventually, as you fix all these things in your problem, this thir in your situation, this $1,300 gets set back and set back and set back, either A, for you to buy a home, B, for you to do something with your credit, or, or, or see to move into a better place, whatever it is that you want to do. Eventually, I will have better homes that I buy as part of as part of this, as this thing keeps on going. But what I need from you, my business plan, it all hinges on you. You got to hit that donate button. You got to give me at least a dollar. All right, that's, that's it's a dollar, okay? That's what I'm going to do with it. 33% of it is going to go towards that. Okay, I'll make my money off of, I mean, I won't make any money. That's, that's, that's kind of the point, is that I'll be making my money off of the donate button, off of the 33% where I told you to go, where it'll come from, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll live off of that. But, but I'm, my, my goal, okay, is to buy up as much housing as we can. That way we can get people off the streets. I want you to understand this does a couple of things, okay? So number one, if you get people off the streets, you know what you, what you lower? You lower crime. 
That's right. When you don't have people on the street with nothing better to do than to have their hands in their pockets and walking down the road, right? Peeping and stuff, contemplating, figuring out what they're gonna do, uh, you have less crime, okay? But they don't have a real reason to wanna step outside of crime until you can give them a home. And you can't give them a home until you start solving things. And, and, and I think this is where it starts at. Okay, I think that we can generate enough money to make it so that eventually no person has to be homeless. Now, now there, there are people out there that like to be alone. There are people out there that have their own way of life. Okay, it, it, and that's that that that's fine. Okay, that you know, um, but uh, but for the majority, we can make homelessness a past issue. Now, I want to tell you something else we can do. If we get this going good enough, okay, because because this can actually generate money over a period of time. It's just a slower clock. And I don't mind doing the slower clock if what we have going here is we're helping people, we're lifting people up, we're better in our community, and we're making things happen. And like I say, that what what if what if for this what if for this holiday season, what if you had an accountant and a therapist that it helped you remember all the little things that you had brought it into the therapist that you talked about your girl or you talked about your your kids or you talked about your dog, right? And so you got a person that actually gives a damn about you listening to you help you figure things out, right? But then you also got an accountant to make sure that you set back enough money. How how would thir an extra thirteen hundred dollars have helped you this holiday season? Right? And what if you could provide that to the man who qualified the man, woman, family that qualifies for low income housing? Okay, but you can, and it's right here in this, what I'll do with it. I, 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 like I say, uh, when I make a move, I'll check in with it. I, I, I don't, you know what I mean? It went, the second I go to buy a house uh, and I go to get uh, uh, some low income housing and whatnot, what I'm doing with it or whatever, I let you guys know. Okay, and I'll let you guys see what, what's happening with it and what's, what's going on. And they'll know that it's as a result of defy yourself the channel that we got right here okay but but it it all it all hinges on you donating that dollar and and and, and that's up to you but that's what i'm doing with it that's my business plan uh i believe god called me this like i say so i i, I already know but um but nonetheless though uh thank you very much and uh you guys have been a joy to host even though and then y'all been talking to me. I've been talking to you. And uh, y'all take care of yourself, all right? All right, later.